Good morning, everybody. I wanted to uh, welcome you to the webinar. Today is going to be an awesome uh, webinar because we are talking about uh, trial close questions for the real estate agent and broker. Uh, here, as usual, at the Anton uh, headquarters here, and one of the things that I know for sure is that if you keep doing these uh, webinars that we keep putting on and you keep practicing, this is what's going to make you more money, especially in an era when we've got, uh, you know, I, I brokerages and e-brokerages, depending on who you're talking to, um, that are taking market share from the real estate uh, agent and broker. We've got a case where the markets are, ch are changing for sure. Uh, so you want to be on your toes. You want to be the best salesperson that you could possibly be in your marketplace, even when you've got a warm market, even when you've got a market in which uh, you know all the people, maybe you've done business with them before. They could be friends, family, network, your, your network that you're working within. Uh, that's when you want to make sure, make sure that you are on your game sales wise, because it's getting tougher <clears throat> and tougher for the real estate agent out there. No fear, though, I've got you covered uh, here with our webinars. Boy, those lights are bright this morning, uh, which is a good thing. So let me do this. I want to share my screen. I took a bunch of notes, and I've got a bunch of uh, things to share with you with that. So let me go ahead and share that. Let me get over to my notes. Boom, boom, this is it. I took a bunch of notes. I've been working a ton on this. I'm <clears throat> building a sales module, not only for you, the real estate uh, agent, but also uh, broker, but also uh, sales in general. I'm pretty pumped up about it. So anyway, um, so yeah, this is it. So let's go through this. Number one, matter of fact, let me zoom this, man. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Boom. This is really the area that we're going to be working on. So I want you to focus on this. You can move my picture anywhere you want. Let me kind of put it towards the camera there so that you uh, see I'm looking right at you here. Uh, number one, every real estate agent needs to understand the importance of closing techniques to enhance his or her closing chances of making that sale. Again, even when you've got a warm audience in place. Your closing scripts must aligns must identify your client's needs while also demonstrating how the home is right for them. To develop a strong closing script line uh, that you can so solidify the deal and grow your business, follow these steps. Now watch this. These steps are going to be really, <clears throat> really, really important. Number one, opinion is not fact. Opinion is not fact. What do I mean by that? Well, we're going to talk about that in general. I use my blue highlighter here so you can see what's important on this. Um, a trial close question is used for a specific purpose. As a matter of fact, they're used for two specific purposes that um, uh, you're going to need uh, to understand as we go along here. I'm going to get to that in a second. But if you've been following what we've been doing, learning the idea of spin, spin is our skeleton when we're sitting down with a buyer seller lease buy sell lease that's our client buy sell lease they're going to do one of those three things and so we're sending when we're sitting with a client we're going to uh go through spin situation problem what does that in problem imply good and bad if it's solved what does it imply if it doesn't solve what does it imply and what is their need their need is you it always ends up at you and or your brokerage so that's kind of our mission and then we're asking those four types of questions that we covered a, a webinar or two ago that uh, open-ended, closed-ended, reflective questions, and buying questions. If you don't know what those are, go back and listen to that lesson, that webinar, because they're really, really important when, they, when you get to here. So today's all about trial questions. So opinion is, in fact, start a question off with the phrase, hey, listen, in your opinion, as that provides you with the opportunity to kind of soften the reply if they have an objection. For example, um, in your opinion, is this a home that you could see your family growing up in? That's a great trial closed question because opinion isn't fact, okay? Opinion is not fact. So that's a good thing. I'm trying to avoid that bright light there coming down. I guess it looks like an angel. 
like I got this sphere of angels coming in. That's okay. <clears throat> um, so it's, it's opinion, not fact, okay? If your client answers no, check this out. It's an opinion and not a fact. You can then find out the reasons behind the response and address any concerns that they may have. By doing this, you're able to showcase whether this home is a viable solution for their current needs, kind of in a friendly, casual way. Okay, so that's number one. I, I would really kind of uh, focus on this. I really like this question. Uh, a lot of people aren't even this far in their training. They don't even know what this is. So you guys are in really good shape here. But by asking that question, um, you can really kind of <clears throat> uh, find out the reasons behind the response, yes and no. No, especially, you're going to go back and do some other things here as we're going to talk about it here in a second. So let's talk about these scripts. <clears throat> what are these scripts? <clears throat> Man, throat is uh, in good shape. It's clogged. No, one, no, one, uh, no need to be alarmed, <clears throat> I think. Trial close scripts. When your client is headed toward a sale, now watch this. Use a trial close script to measure their level of interest and any address any concerns accordingly. Ask questions such as this right here. Boom, let's highlight this. <clears throat> Does this seem like, a, like the uh, kind of solution that you're looking for? Buy, sell, lease, whatever that is. <clears throat> that, my friends, is a great trial close question. Does this seem like the home? Does this seem like the kind of solution that you're looking for? Does this home seem like? So this would be if you're working with a buyer. If you're working with a, uh, a seller, it might be something like this. Hey, does this listing uh, proposal uh, seem like the kind of solution that you're looking for? Or does my concept on how we would list the home seem like uh, the solution that you're looking for? Okay. Um, their response provides you with the opportunity to explore uh, their reactions and solidify how it is the solution they need, if it is the solution they need. So this is why trial questions are so important. Um, think about this. The most important thing you can do to improve your sales closing performance is to master uh, trial closing techniques. A lot of people don't do this. So really, like I said before, they achieve two things. These are the two things that a trial close is going to achieve right here. Let me go ahead and highlight that. Uh, number one, it tells you where you are in the sales process, process. Always good to know. And number two, it tells you when to ask specifically for the sale. If you don't know that, then you're going to be lost in the sale. And I see a lot of real estate agents and brokers really kind of lost in that sale. They don't know where they are and they don't have a script or a chart to follow or, or the skeleton of spin that we keep talking about uh, with that. They're typically just dealing with their warm uh, audience that they know, people they know, their own network, and they're not expanding that. <clears throat> and that's going to be the biggest challenge <clears throat> that I see moving forward in this market that we're in uh, today is if you're not expanding your market and you're only dealing with your warm market, you're going to run out of leads. And um, you're probably going to not make as much money as uh, you should be making. So um, think about that. If I put this in another example, if I give you another way to think about this, watch this. For example, let's say that you're shopping for a smartphone. You go into the store and the salesperson greets you. She finds out what exactly that you're looking for and begins to demo the voice activation feature on one of the smartphone models. When she finishes showing you the voice activation, how it works, <clears throat> she asks, what do you think about this voice activation? Simple, but a good uh, trial close question to that point. She's gauging and finding out where you are <clears throat> in the sale. These are really, this really should be your, your MVT, if you will, your most valuable tool, or at least one of them in your toolbox that you are going to be using. The trial close is a salesperson's MVT, MVT. Like I just said, it's a thermometer of blood pressure cuff. It's critical in, uh, using it as a diagnostic tool that assesses the situation, assesses where you are in the sale, or better yet, assesses how the prospect feels about the product or service that you're selling. And obviously, in this case, it's going to be real estate. 
uh, or your, you know, buy, uh, sell, lease, buy, sell, lease, or, or uh, sell, rent, buy, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do, like put it in their thing. But those are our three clients. <clears throat> so during your time with a prospect, you should constantly be taking his or her temperature to determine whether they're cold, warm, or hot and react accordingly. Without the trial close, the salesperson is lost and whether or not a salesperson learns to trial close will have more of an impact on his or her closing ratio than really any other skill a salesperson, or in this case, a real estate salesperson, can learn. Uh, salespeople should practice trial closing until it becomes an instinctive part of the sales process. Since the number one goal of a professional real estate agent broker is to achieve a 100% close ratio, I mean, that's really what we're after. Now, whether we get there or not, that's a whole nother thing altogether. But effective trial closing will get you there faster and easier than any other sales technique. Now, keep in mind that a trial close is not the same as asking for the sale. It's not the same. All you're doing here, again, is taking really their temperature. You're acting as the thermometer here. You're not really, um, to this point, acting like the thermostat, but the thermometer. And I think there's a, there's a big important difference there. Um, here's the difference between asking for the sale and <clears throat> using a trial close. Asking for the sale. This is this is um, this would be an example, and then we'll give it uh, a little bit more detail um, a, around selling a house, buying a house, or leasing a property. So, asking for the sale. If I can get you the payment terms you're seeking, will you decide to buy? Now, that's kind of a generic um, asking for the sale. But, uh, you know, it could be as something as simple as, hey, you know, I have a listing agreement uh, here ready to go on my computer. If I customize it to your situation, are you ready to sign? That would be asking for the sale on the listing side. Or if you're really uh, representing a lot of buyers and you're talking to uh, buyers a lot where um, you're getting them to sign a buyer's agreement, you could use that in the same sense. Hey, I'd love to be able to show you homes. I, matter of fact, that's the main thing that I do with my clients. Uh, I have a buyer's agreement right here. Are you ready to go? So that's a that's a try. That's a uh, a asking for the sale. So a trial close would be how do you feel about the payment terms? You're not asking for the sale, but rather asking the the prospect uh, how they feel about that particular element of the sale. So. Why is this so important? Well, in my experience, in my opinion, uh, as a, you know, basically being in sales my whole life, I've really seen too many examples of real estate agents and brokers talking about what they do and then asking for the sale. Uh, as such, most salespeople really don't know where they are in this whole process. And when they try to close a deal, there are too many impediments or really unanswered questions. In other words, to keep it in the language that we used a couple of webinars ago, the prospect isn't up the gradient yet far enough to where you can ask for the sale yet. So when they try to close the deal, there's too many things that are left open and they're not far up the gradient at all. So the typical answer is no. And a real estate agent and broker typically does not want to hear no. And so they, they walk away. They leave that opportunity. Um, so the first reason to trial close is to really understand where you are in the sales process so that you know what is important to that particular buyer and where to take the conversation. You know the type of questions from our training a few uh, uh, episodes, if you will, ago, and that's open-ended, closed-ended questions. That's what you need to go back to at this point. And then you probably need to ask some reflective questions before you start to go any further. <clears throat> what you're looking for from them, that response that we talked about before, is a buying question. Once you get that buying question, then you're going to start to ask a trial close question. And then, this is the topic of next week's uh, webinar, you're going to go into asking for the sale or closing uh, the deal. So it's going to be very, very important that um, you know uh, how to do that and you know what's what's going on with that. So the second reason that you want to trial close is to find out when it's appropriate to ask for the sale. Knowing when to ask for the sale is much more important than, than knowing how to ask for the sale. Remember that. I'll say that one more time. Knowing when to ask for the sale is much more important than knowing how to ask for the sale or how to ask for the order. 
Uh, I don't believe really in this hard closing technique. I think that's pretty transparent to your uh, prospects. And it's really too uncomfortable for me. I'm just not, I don't sell that way. And I'd rather be, you know, a kind of a trusted advisor than a, a, clo a hard closer. And if you know when to ask for the order, um, and then you know how to ask for the order, this whole process becomes much, much easier. But again, knowing when is much more important than, than really even understanding how. So examples that you could go to here. Uh, let me go and highlight all of these because these are going to be something that you're going to want to practice on. Uh, here's some uh, common trial closing questions. You can customize these. These are just examples. But think about these in terms of how easy they are to ask and how much information you get from the prospect. So a few of these. How do you feel about what we've just discussed? Or what do you think about the solution I've shared with you? Or how does uh, what we've talked about sound to you? You know, these are all very general in nature. You're going to have to customize them. And, but that's where the practice comes in. Based on what you've heard so far, what are your questions? Uh, if you've had it your way, what changes would you make to the proposal? If it is a proposal, right? Uh, so all those things can be customized. But they're really, really simple and easy questions to ask. Remember, though, these are all uh, open-ended questions, open-ended questions where you're looking for more detail. You're not looking for a yes or no, red or blue, Wednesday, Thursday. You're looking for more descriptive detail as to where they are in the sale so that you can go back and diagnose what you need to do, whether to move forward to a closing question or uh, secure the sale or go back and get them further up the gradient. That's what these questions are for. <clears throat> you need to ask a trial closing question that will get your prospect talking. You want them to talk out loud so you can learn about where you are, again, in the sales process and when the right time is to ask for the sale. Now, something that I do that I think is important is when you get there and you're asking these open-ended questions, and you're getting uh, some responses where you're getting clarity on where they are in the sale, then you're going to want to ask these what we call reflective questions. Reflective questions, as you may remember from a previous webinar, is questions that are getting your prospect to say yes, not only once, but maybe twice, maybe three or four times, and then looking to ask a trial close question. Something about that positivity, getting them to say yes, several times before asking that is going to be really, really uh, important. So here's how home buyers and homeowners respond to a trial close question. When you ask a trial close question, you will likely get one of these three responses. Number one, they're cold as ice. Number two, they're kind of feeling it. And number three, they're ready to roll. Uh, the following really information here provides some guidance to you guys as to how I think you should respond. So uh, I laid these out uh, yesterday. They're very general. I want you to customize them, but you'll get the point after this. So cold as ice. If you get this type of response as a trial closed question, then you need to ask a follow-up question that immediately captures your prospect's attention because it's clear that you have not broken through yet. Here's some examples. If you were the salesperson, what do you think about what I presented so far? Uh, the prospect, I don't think I would be interested. Salesperson, I can appreciate that. One other question I have, though, is how does your company handle transportation delays, which can affect your manufacturing timetables? Now, that's an example. That's a general thing. How do we apply that to real estate? That could be something like this. Well, you said that you were really concerned about selling your house before uh, the summer ended. Um, with what you have in mind right now, what is your plan? So you're getting this tailored back to real estate. And that's where I think that you can um, really get some deep down information. The result is the prospect responds with information and the salesperson asks another open-ended question to find out if the prospect is still in the mode of resistance. So if I can put together a proposal to you in which we would market this uh, house of yours in a pretty unique way using the best real estate agent or broker in your market. Uh, they've she sold more homes in this market than anybody else. Would that be of interest to you? Boom, trial close question, and we've tailored it to 
uh, your business as a real estate agent and broker. The second scenario, what if they said, hey, I'm kind of feeling that. I'm kind of interested in that. If you get that type of response to your trial close question, you know that you're on the right track, making process progress, and it is time to strengthen your story before asking for the sale. <clears throat> Here's an example. The salesperson or the real estate agent broker. Uh, how do you feel about everything we've talked about so far? The prospect. Everything sounds pretty good so far. Uh, you, the salesperson, real estate agent, broker, say something like this. When we first met, you mentioned that your company is having a hard time meeting delivery schedules. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, you could turn that from a real estate perspective into this. You know, when we first uh, got talking, you were you were mentioning the fact that you were going to have trouble really staging the house ready uh, for sale. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? All I'm doing is tailoring that to uh, your scenario as a real estate agent broker. The result, the prospect responds and the salesperson then discusses another feature that deals with that new elements, uh, such as this. Hey, no problem. We've got three or four companies that we work with that are wonderful at staging properties. And science has shown and stats have shown that when you stage it properly, not only do you sell it faster, but you actually sell it for more money. Would that be of interest to you? Boom, another trial close question. And so um, the last scenario here is when you're talking to somebody <clears throat> and they're really ready to roll. They're ready to go. They're, they're hot to trot, if you will. Um, they're ready to sign on the deadline, the leasing agreement, the listing agreement, the buying uh, representative agreement, whatever it is. So if you get that type of response from your trial close question, then it's time to ask for the sale. Here's an example. Remember, it's more importantly to know when than exactly how. Really important to understand. So the salesperson, how does uh, what we've discussed sound to you? I'm sorry. How does what we've discussed sound to you? Prospect, it sounds really good. This is really what we're looking for. The salesperson, great. What's the next step from your perspective? Now, I don't typically like that question. I'm going to come back to it. And the prospect, I like to get things started. So what I would do is really kind of cut that right there. If you feel comfortable with it, when somebody says, hey, this is exactly what they're looking for, give them what they want at that point. Um, so I had a little bit of disconnect there, but I thought I'd throw it in because it came from the research that I was doing. Um, and then the last one there sounds good. All I need is your signature on the listing contract and we can get things going immediately. So again, I wouldn't necessarily use that specific one. I would tailor it, but the message is the same with all of these. When they're ready to go, go. It's not so much important of how you're asking for that. It's when, um, I see people continuing to sell when the buyer's ready to be closed. Selling and closing are two different things. And that's where I see a lot of agents make mistakes. They continue to sell when the buyer's ready to go. So a trial closing summary. Let me kind of uh, get with you uh, uh, a little summary with this. I think it's important. Trial closing questions are open-minded, opinion asking questions. They enable you as a salesperson to assess where you are in the sales process and evaluate the readiness of your prospect to ask for the sale. The response that you get from trial close questions will tell you what to do next. More than any other tool in your set of techniques, effective use of the trial close questions will improve your closing ratio. Did you cover it? Not all clients are going to vocalize why they think a particular home is not for them. And this is valuable information that allows you to redirect their thinking and finalize the sale as your potential buyer. You might want to, um, you know, say something like this. What haven't I covered yet that is important to you? Their response will allow you to reevaluate your approach and place emphasis in the right elements of a home that meets their needs. You can also do this if you're listing uh, a home or a leasing scenario. Buy, sell, lease, remember. <clears throat> um, spending all the time to do the legwork, researching prospects, Building rapport and understanding a prospect's unique needs all leads to one thing. Boom, the close. We are locking down that sale. Closing a sale is good, and if you're good at it, you'll be very successful. Here at Anton, of course, we know that unfortunately the close is perhaps the most difficult aspect of the sales process. Getting people to commit is a challenge, even if it's a minimal house or a small apartment uh, leasing scenario. 
uh, is tough. That's why this does take practice. Closing requires putting in the work. You have to prepare for the many possible situations that lay ahead, including pushback and objections, which we are going to cover in detail. I got you. I got you covered. Research is the key. Sales reps, real estate agents, brokers need to find out everything uh, possible about their client, their business needs, issues, interests, current solutions. Doing your homework will help you find great solutions and analyze factors that may prevent or delay a closing. Always be closing. We talked about that. Before I get into my next uh, scenario of closing, I'll uh, leave it with that. You know, I was working with somebody over the weekend in the sales process, and she was great because she does a ton of research on people that she's working with with regard to prospects. And I learned something from that. Uh, social media is a great tool to research people, to find out what their needs are, to find out what they like, to find out what their environment is, all of that. And if you can do research there, along with some other things, I think that's really going to help you with your trial closes and asking the right questions to understand where their temperature is. Checking their temperature as the thermometer. You don't want to be the thermostat at this thing, but you want to be the thermometer. Uh, so trial closing is important. It's the bridge that gets you to the sale. And uh, it also tells you where you are in the sale. It's your roadmap. So that's our training for today. I wanted to congratulate everybody for being here again. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you want to make it. Um, stay safe out there. We will see you on next week's webinar where we're going to be talking about closing and the closing process, the techniques to be a closer. Remember, ABC, always be closing. We will talk to everybody next week. Have a great one and reach out if you need anything. Thanks, everybody.